Good morning, TBC. I like that response. I think that. Good morning, good morning, TBC. You know, we do this every week, and it always takes twice for y'all to wake up. But that's okay. We'll do it as many times as we need to do it. Good morning, TBC. Oh, there y'all are. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, yes? Yes, one more time, one more time. Amen. Um, there was an eclipse, but then the sun came back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and it's actually sunny today, which is a beautiful thing. You know, um, it is just a reminder that everything changes except God. God never changes. God is constant. God is steady. He is always there for us, always providing for us. He created all of this. He has a plan. And all we really need to do is to plug into him. And then we know that everything is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be exactly how it's supposed to be. Amen. So uh, we'll start service this morning, entering into worship, into praise, into acknowledging God the same way that we usually do. We'll have Sister Lori sing for us, and then we will join in. This song tells us to forget about ourselves, to concentrate on him and worship him. Because we know that when we focus on ourselves, we're not seeing the full picture. We're not seeing the path that God is leading us on. And we really can't see everything that he can see. And so if we lift God up and put him in the proper place, and we look up and we focus on him, then we know that everything is going to be exactly how it should be. We have so forget about yourself, concentrate on Him and worship Him. So yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So
worship him, we would let his glory rise. We let his praises rise among us, and we welcome God.
let that song, we let that praise rise by joining in praise together and blessing the Lord together with our voices, with our hearts, with our hands. Yeah? Mm. So we invite you right now to come on and bless the Lord with us. Y'all know this song, I know. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Yeah, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless him. Yeah, bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah.
the Lord. Keep that clapping going. Keep that praise going. Please ask everyone to stand for your feet. Receive our pastor, our ministerial staff, and our deaconess. Somebody say glory, hallelujah. Say glory, hallelujah. God has blessed you today. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you to the historic 12th Baptist Church in the great city of Roxbury where our pastor is the Reverend Dr. Willie Bodrick II. Praise the Lord. I'm Reverend Jeffrey Brown, associate pastor, and it's just an honor to be here. It's an honor to be alive one more day. And we are thankful that we're able to come together and worship together in spirit and in truth. As is our custom here at 12th Baptist, we'd like to start off our moment in prayer where we can think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. Think about what happened this week and that you're here today. Let the church say amen. That's the reason. 
church. Good morning, church. The Lord has blessed us through yet another week. So as we enter into this service, I ask that you would all stand for our call to worship.
The psalmist says, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout about, shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and just continue to bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Opening hymn number 120, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. the fourth verse let's listen to our musicians church. You may be seated. And let us go before God this morning. Ooh, holy God, almighty Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning, God. We thank you for the sun shining. We thank you for the birds singing. We thank you for this time, God, where your spirit uh, brings to life, God, the flowers and, uh, and the leaves of the trees. So we just pray, Father, that your spirit would just descend richly in this place on every heart, everyone in this sanctuary and everyone online, God, uh, that we might be touched and transformed 
uh, by the good word that you've placed in Pastor Brown today. So we thank you, Lord, for our music ministry. We thank you for everyone who helps to bring this service to life, God. And we just pray that our hearts and minds might be open to receive the word that you have this morning. So we thank you and we praise you. And in the holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Church, say amen. I thank God for Minister Isaiah Briggs. He is our youth minister in charge of the children's church. And that was his first morning prayer. I said, are you ready? He said, kind of. <laughs> but it's all right. Anybody can talk to God. We are a church of prayer. And as you know, we have prayer all through the week. We have our corporate prayers Monday through Saturday, 1215 to 1245 p.m., we have our early morning Thursday prayer at 6 a.m. We have Friday night, our, uh, our prayer meeting at 7 p.m. The wonderful thing about Friday night is that it's still on Zoom, amen. So you can Zoom in from wherever you are and so that we can pray together, amen. We have a list of people that we want you to pray for, and it's really important for us to name their names in the presence of God. So bear with me as we say these names for prayer. Of course, our pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Arthur T. Gerald, Jr., Brother Charles Dawson, Brother Daniel Watson, Sister Ida Speller, Sister Stephanie Janey, Sister Sandra Rains, Sister Shirley Smith Downey, Sister Andrea Coleman, Sister Valerie Jean Brown Johnson, Sister Joanne Prince, Sister Violet Britton, Sister Frances Lawson, Sister Carolyn Jones, Brother Milton Britton Sr., Sister Monica Wright, Sister Callie Bird, Sister Lisa Dix, Sister Eleanor Webb, Mr. Jeremy Beatty, Sister Georgia Cox, Sister Edna Little, Sister Jean Haynes and her daughters, Linda Donovan, Paulette, and Holly Haynes. Sister Mitty Thomas, Sister Georgia Coleman, Sister Sandra Struther, Mr. Todd Gibbs, Mr. James Thomas, Mr. A uh, Anthony Tony Johnson, Mr. Lee Thurston, Sister Rudell Peeler, Sister Petrina Small, Sister Major uh, Marjorie Brathwaite, Mr. Raymond Greaves of Trinidad, Brother Charles Powell, Sister Renee Beckett Simmons, Sister Eleanor Utley, Sister Evelyn Cornish, Junior Brathwaite of Barbados to Brother of Deacons Emerson and Michael Brathwaite, Sister Marcia Hubbard, Sister uh, Robsita Gray, stepdaughter of Minister uh, Rachel Itawu Gray, Mr. William McNelly, the son-in-law of Sister Crystal Jackson, Mary Denny of Florida, Brother Anthony Busby, Sister Ruthie Phillip, Mr. David Mitchell, son of Sister Georgia Cox, Yvonne Burton, Willie Burton, the Long Harley family, Kathleen Reardon, the family of evangelist Juanita Grant, Carolyn Coleman also requests prayer. She will be entering the hospital on Friday for a surgical procedure. Let everybody say, in Jesus' name. For our bereaved families, we want to pray for the Gibbs Ford family on the death of Sister Beulah Gibbs, Brother Jeffrey Jackman and family on the death of his mother-in-law in Barbados, a family of uh, Sister Gwendolyn Stewart and family on the death of her niece, Yvonne Simmons of Chicago, Sister Christine Spencer and family on the death of her cousin, Carolyn Anderson of Detroit, Brother Barnell Watson and family uh, on the death of his mother, Renee of North Carolina, uh, Sister Jane White and family on the death of her cousin, 
Irene Keller Smith, and the funeral was yesterday in Woburn. And please pray for my wife's family, the Grice family. They lost one of their patriarchs, uh, our Uncle Dan. And say, in Jesus' name. Women's Retreat is October the 11th through the 13th at the Dedham Hilton, sponsored by Feel Good, by Design Life Enrichment Ministry of the St. John's Missionary Baptist Church. First Lady Devin Cromartie Bondrick and First Lady Portia Franklin Gordon will be the facilitators and the presenters, and the flyers are in the narthex. Let the church say amen. Do you like to cook? I hope so, because the missions ministry is seeking families, individuals, and our TBC ministries to sign up to cook one Sunday for our senior meals. Now, I will stress that you have to know how to cook. You know how when someone joins a choir and they say they make a joyful noise? We just want you to be able to cook. We want our seniors to enjoy the meal. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm, just, I'm just being real, you know. Look at your neighbor and say, he just being real. <laughs> Did you know we have an excellent after-school program with open slots in our program for children ages 5 to 13 years? The program is in session Monday through Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m and vouchers are accepted. There are three components, the after school in September to June, the April school vacation week, which is coming up this week, April 15th through 19th, and the summer enrichment program. If you're looking to bring your kid in, especially for April school vacation week, uh, the applications are in the central office and see uh, Sister Bell for that. Uh, we also want you to remember the Piano Summit that will be on April the 28th, this last Sunday in April at 4 p.m. It is named after the baddest flautist east of the Mississippi, Lance Martin. He was a bad boy. Amen. I come to the Piano Summit every year at 4 o'clock. I'm telling you, it's the best musicians in the whole world. They come in and they play. And sometimes they play, make me want to get up and run around the church. They, I'm telling you, I'm trying to tell you, it is a blessing to be there. And so we thank God uh, for Brother Jonathan for keeping that going. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, J Jonathan should play, but he usually doesn't play. But maybe this year we can get him to play a little bit. I don't know. I'm just trying. He's giving me that death stare right now, but that's all right. But uh, please come April 28th, 4 p.m. It is a fantastic time in the Lord. We want to remind you that our after school program in the central office will be closed tomorrow. April 15th in recognition of Patriots Day. Also remember tomorrow is Marathon Day. So the marathon will be happening. So govern yourselves in quarterly in terms of the roads that you have to drive on. Amen? Amen. Uh, our church council meeting is scheduled for Thursday, April the 18th at 6.45 p.m. via Zoom. Council members should check your email for the Zoom log and the minutes of the October 23rd meeting. So council meeting Thursday, April the 20th. That's this Thursday at 6.45 p.m. Just two quick announcements. I want to celebrate our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Willie Bondrick II. Uh, this weekend, he was inducted into the Morehouse Board of Preachers. Amen. So he was in uh, rare air with all of the class of the 38th class of the uh, Board of Preachers at Morehouse uh, College. That is a real honor, as particularly among preachers. And so the fact that he was there, I was like, Lord, have mercy. Roxbury is represented. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so we are thankful to God that 
that uh, the family went down to celebrate. Remember, he is a native of Atlanta, so he's enjoying Atlanta and coming back today. But we thank God for what God continues to do through our leader. Amen? Amen. We also want to uh, let you know that we have a book signing event uh, going back to T-Town, the Ernie Fields Territory Big Band by Carmen Fields, our own Carmen Fields. We'll have a book signing uh, April the 21st uh, here at the church, 160 Warren Street. Books are on sale at a cost of $25. The author will be here to uh, sign the books. Refreshments will be served at 9.30 a.m. The discussion is from 10.30 a.m. to noon. For more information, uh, contact Linda Cabral of Violet Britain through the TBC Central Office. But it's going to be a good time. The book is $25, but I'll give you the Reverend Brown discount. The book will be $15 plus $10 tax. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Minister Isaiah Briggs is in charge of our children's church. And right after these announcements, which is right now, we want all the children to go and follow him downstairs. Let the church say amen. amen. <laughs>
just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I worship and adore you. I just want to say, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, I love, I love you, Lord. Yeah. I love you, Jesus. Oh, I love you and I worship and I worship and Just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want.
Have you ever thought about what it means? Amen, amen, amen. To love God more than anything. <laughs> to love God more than what's familiar. <laughs> to love God more than what feels safe. To love God more than what's expected. To love God more than our expectations. Because you know what? Sometimes God arrives unexpected, unless we always expect him. And some of y'all are going to go home and understand that later. What I'm saying is that sometimes God arrives unexpected, unless we always expect him. So if you love God more than your expectations, if you love God more than your disappointments, if you love God more than the things that you know, than the things that you feel, than the things that you have experienced before, I can't even begin to tell you how freeing that is. Because it was me. I love my expectations. I love to read and to learn and to understand things, to watch patterns and try to predict things. And then the unexpected happened. And I didn't know what to do. Because there was no reading, there was no preparation. But God. Mm. Because when the unexpected comes, you can expect that God is not caught off guard. He already knows. He already has a plan. He's already provided for it. He's already taken care of it. And so when we expect God, the unexpected doesn't matter. When we expect God, our other expectations don't matter. So I urge you today to think about what it means to love God more than we love anything. More than we love money, more than we love our relationships with other human beings, more than we love ourselves. Because if we love God more than we love anything, mm, then nothing else is even a factor. Just let go and let God. Say, I love you. Say, I love you, Jesus. Say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and I worship and adore you. I just want to, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. One more time, one more time. Just our voices, just our voices. Say, I love, say, I love. Jesus, I worship, say, I worship, and I just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, one more time, like you mean it, say, I love you, Jesus, say, I love you, Jesus, oh, I worship.
sing it one more time. I love you, Jesus. this ensemble this morning. You clap for them, but they give God the glory. Stand on your feet, turn in your Bibles to the Gospel according to John. The Gospel according to John. And the 21st chapter, last chapter in John. John 21. John 21. And we will read the first 12 verses, verses 1 through 12 of John chapter 21. I still hear pages turning. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Page 1687 in the Pew Bible. When you have it, say amen. amen. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, somebody say early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, mm -hmm. and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Hallelujah. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord. He wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat, dragged the net ashore, 
it was full of large fish, a hundred and fifty and three. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. They knew it was the Lord. If I had a subject for you for this morning, it would be, now what? Look at your neighbor and say, now what? Look, look behind you and say, now what? Speak, Lord, for we thy servants hear thee. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. And let the people of God say together, amen. amen. You may be seated. I was talking to Minister Jeremy Tate just a few minutes ago. And we were talking about where we were going to go on this message. And I said, I was led to this text while pastor was preaching last week. And he said something at the end that intrigued me. Now he had asked me to preach this Sunday and I had my text all laid out, but you know, the Lord has a way of redirecting your path whenever he wants to. So, so I, I, I heard what was said in the message and it got me thinking. And, and here is the piece that I'm talking about. Remember last week, pastor preached on Thomas and, and the encounter that Thomas had with Jesus. First the disciples and then Jesus, right? They were in a room and that room was locked. Jesus appeared and they were happy. Thomas came in later and he said, what's going on? They said, we've seen the Lord. And he said, unless I put my hands in his nail, unless I see the nail prints in his hands and put my fingers in his side, I will not believe. And then the text goes about a week later. They're again in a locked room, and Jesus appears. Thomas is with them. As soon as Jesus appears, he walks to Thomas and says, take a look, the nail prints. He said, come on, put your hand right in that side. See, feel, and believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus said, you know, because you're able to see, because you're able to feel, you believe. But blessed are those who do not see or feel, but yet believe. What he dropped at the end of his message was this, this little nugget about the fact that both times the disciples were in a room that was locked. And pastor said, and this was towards the end, and if, and if you weren't careful, you could have missed it. But he said, instead of cowering and being afraid, they should be praising the Lord. Because all of what they learned and all of what they experienced came true. Everything that Jesus said would happen to him happened. And I mean everything. They dragged him from judgment hall to judgment hall. And they beat him with a cat of nine tails. They put an old rugged cross on his back and they led him up to Calvary's dusty head 
And then they hung him high, stretched him wide, and dropped him low. But remember, Jesus said they're going to destroy this temple. But in three days, something else was going to happen. And early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. That means every teaching that he taught was true. That means every miracle that he performed was true. That means everything that he said about who he is and who his father was, was true. But the disciples, the night after he resurrected himself, was in a lock room afraid and a week later after Jesus appeared to them in that locked room they were in the locked room again afraid what why is it why is it that when God touches us, why don't we operate like God has truly changed everything? That's the question that the Lord dropped in my spirit. Because pastor was right. It, Jesus did everything that he said he was going to do. But yet the disciples were in a locked room, afraid of the very people who brought Jesus to judgment. And in our text today, here we have the disciples on the shore, having been received the mandate to go out into the world. Come on, somebody. And spread the gospel. They sitting on the shore. And then Peter says, you know what? I'm going to get some catfish. <laughs> and the other disciples said, okay, we go with you. I, I, I don't know, Minister Tate, why it is that when everything changes, we have this tendency to go back to the same things that we have always done. There are some folk who get sick, and they get sick in their body, and they call on the name of the Lord, and then the doctor looks at them, and they say, you know, we were prescribing these things for you, but something is going on in your body. And what we were going to do, we're not going to do now. Because you're going to be all right. I would like to say it was the doctor's prognosis, but the real doctor was the one that touched you. And his name is Jesus. Something like that happens. And folk are transformed. But after the transformation, they go back to the same old, same old. Wait a minute now. With the same fears. With the same doubts. With the same anxieties with the same moodiness. Why is it when we get touched by God that we don't acknowledge that touch? Sometimes I get amazed with church folk who've been going to church for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and then something happens to them 
and they act like they ain't never been in church before. Come on, somebody. You've been around those church folk. Uh, they say praise the Lord until they need the Lord. And then the old behaviors come up. Then the old attitudes come up. And, and when somebody goes to them and say, I'm going to pray for you, then they got an attitude and they say, no, you need to pray for yourself. I need to go to the doctor. Come on, somebody. I ain't looking at nobody right now. And I don't know nobody's business, so don't, don't say I'm talking about you. All I'm trying to say to you is that, is that when everything changes, we have to behave like everything has changed. We can't walk around and just wait for the next thing and wait for the next thing. If God touched your body and removed that cancer, come on somebody, then you need to walk around like you know that God is a healer. If you were about to lose your house, but something happened and you found the money and you were able to be delivered, then you ought to walk around like God makes a way out of no way. But these, but these disciples, they're on the shore. They're not going to folks' houses or events and saying, let me tell you about Jesus. They sitting on the shore, sunning themselves. And then Peter says, you know what? I'm going to get some flounder. And then the other one say, all right, all right, we'll go with you. And then they go, and then they find themselves fishing. And they have fished all night. And then they don't catch anything. Lord, have mercy. You know, sometimes I wonder, because a miracle is about to happen, I wonder how many people's Christianity is just built on the miraculous. I wonder, and I'm not, you know, let me just look up again. Let me look up, because I'm not looking at anybody. But I wonder how many people's Christian integrity is built on whether or not God is going to come through with a miracle. What I know is that true Christian integrity is not found in what God can do for you, but it's found in what you can do for God no matter what God does for you. There are folk who will walk away from Jesus because they've been praying and praying and praying for something and God has not come through. And they start to question their very faith. And they say, I, I thought that God was a miracle worker. Now you contrast with the person who actually believes in God. And they will tell you that because God did not deliver you from that thing that you've been praying for, doesn't mean that God isn't there. Because God hasn't given you that specific miracle, it doesn't mean that God isn't a miracle worker. If you woke up this morning, and when you woke up, 
you still had your right mind and you had the activity of your limbs and you had a roof over your head and clothes on your back and food on the table. That's a miracle! I'm just preaching on. Is that all right? I, I had wrote something down, but I said, you know, I'm just going to let the Lord use me. Amen. You know, I, I, I wonder about that demand that folk have about God, you know, like miracle on demand. You know, like God is some kind of fast food miracle worker. And all you got to do is come up to the heavenly counter and then God says may I take your order what what we need to understand the way Job had to understand because Job was so arrogant that he said to his friends if I die I'm gonna go before the Lord argue my case and I will win but then God showed up and he said to Job, where were you when I laid the foundation of the world? You talking about your little world. I control everything. So how can you possibly know the will of God? And what I'm doing to you. Where is your place? Where is the peace? Some of y'all are so arrogant to think that you know the devil is a liar. You better let God be God. Here's what I really want to say. They're on the shore and they're just sitting there and then Peter says, I'm going to get some salmon. <laughs> and then they said, okay, we're going to go. And they're sitting on the shore like they're waiting on God. But the reality is, is that God is waiting on them. <laughs> and there are some of you right now, you waiting on God to do something for you. <laughs> But God is waiting on you to take that next step. And there's some of you who are missing out on what God has for you because you won't move unless God moves in a certain way. And if God doesn't move in that certain way, then you're not going to do anything. I wonder if that was the motivation of Peter. Well, they were so used to taking direction from Jesus that when he wasn't physically there, they didn't know what to do. But I love Peter because he did something. And there are some folk around here who are afraid to do anything because they're afraid that they will mess up with God. Come on, somebody. You don't want to move because you're afraid of failure. You're afraid of missing something. And so rather than take the risk of faith, what pastor was talking about last week, instead we just stay motionless and say, well, that, that is better than failing. Well, the devil is a liar. And, and, and Jesus even talked 
about that. Remember he, uh, of, a, of a parable of a man who gave people talents. He gave one five, he gave one two, and he gave one one. And he said, now go out, take the risk, and get in that bazaar, and prosper and multiply. And when the guy came back, the one with five said, hey, I took your five, I made ten. And he said, beautiful, that's wonderful, enter into the glory. He said, the other one said, I, I had two, and, and now you've got five. And he said, that's great. But then there was one who said, well, you know, I know how hard of a person you are. So I took the one thing that you gave me, and I buried it. And made sure that nobody would steal it. And so I'm just going to give it back to you. And what happened? Jesus said, that one took, had his one taken away. And then he was put in prison because of his disobedience. See, the thing about faith is that, yes, sometimes you do fail. But because God is God and he's got all power and he controls everything, it doesn't mean that you're going to fail forever. Your job is to get up and try it again. See, I, I, I don't know. I, I, get, I get bothered by, by folk when they talk about trauma. And trauma is real. Trauma is real. I, I hope people have been traumatized for hundreds of years. And I understand that, and people want to address that, and we need to address that, and we need to have all the faculties to be able to uh, deal with the anxiety and the, the depression and, and all of the things that come with trauma. But there's something to be said about spiritual resiliency. There's something to be said. I, I don't know where it goes in the current arguments today. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is that God has a way of building you up when everybody else is trying to tear you down. God has a way of opening a door that everybody else is trying to shut. God has a way by putting you on solid ground when somebody's trying to put you in quicksand. So I don't fault Peter. He got up. He said, I'm going to get me whatever fish you want to add in there. And he said, I'm going to move. And that's what I want you to do. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So get up, move, walk, run. If you stumble, get back up, walk, run. Don't be defined by the cares of this world. I should have brought my glasses. I, I can't even read what I wrote. I'm just going to go where the Lord tells me to leave. That fourth verse is really important. It says that Jesus appeared on the shore. But they didn't recognize that it was Jesus. It was three years, right, Jonathan? Three years that they were with Jesus. They knew everything about him. They knew the voice. You know? I remember when I was growing up in church, and I would be back in the back with the boys. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You know, we don't want to be there. We, you know, we got to be there because our parents tell us that we need to be there. And I remember, I, I distinctly remember my mother, who's watching, St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church, sitting back there in the back. 
up to no good. And I hear this. <clears throat> now, that sounds like anybody's clearing their throat. But I knew that was my mama. And then, let me see if I can do it the way she did it. This is how she did it. She went just like this. That looked was a communication. And it wasn't good for me. See, they don't do this, and I'm not an advocate for it, and I'm not trying to trigger anybody, but all I'm saying, that back in those days, there was this phenomenon called the switch. And then the worst thing that you can hear, go and bring me a switch. Three years, they knew Jesus, but they were on the boat, heard the voice, didn't recognize that it was Jesus. But then Jesus said, you haven't found any fish? And they were like, nah. And he said, cast a net on the right side of the boat. And you should find some fish. And you know, I, I, I wonder, and I wonder, I wonder, you know, these experienced fishermen who had been fishing all night, who had cast that net on the left side, the right side, left side again, front, back, all around, hadn't found any fish. And this guy who was on the shore says, cast it over there. And so they do. Now, the disciple whom Jesus loved was John, who was there, because they're all fishermen. When that happened, I don't know if he heard the story or if he was actually there. I think he might have been there when Peter was first called. You might remember that in Luke, the fifth chapter, Jesus was teaching the crowd. And it got so big that he had to get in a boat. And so he got into Peter's boat and he taught the crowd. And after he taught the crowd, he said to the fishermen, throw the net over there and you'll get some fish. And when they did that, they got so many fish that the net began to break. And then Peter went to Jesus and said, please, please get away from me because I am a sinful man, oh Lord. But then Jesus said, get on up, Peter. We're going to do a different kind of fishing now with you by my side. I don't know, but every now and then, even when we're doing something, God has a way to remind us of how he showed up in our lives. And when he reminds you about what he has done for you, he'll let you know that he is still there for you and that whatever you will do, come on somebody, somebody ought to be shouting right now. I don't know about you, but every now and then, I go through difficulty. I find myself dragging. I find my spirit down. But every now and then, God will remind me through something in my life that he's still there, that he walks with me, that he talks with me, that he tells me I'm his own. And the joy comes back into my spirit. And I say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now what? 
Walk in the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't just come when you need the Spirit. The Spirit is always there. So you can have a conversation with God anytime, any place, any circumstance. And you can grow in your spirit the more you realize that he's always there. And if you don't quite know what to do, do something. Because God has a way of leading you. Because he got something to work with. And guiding you into all truth. Church, say amen. 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 I, I love the Lord. I love everything about God. Even when God chastises and disciplines, I just know that he's got my best interest in heart. And yeah, there's some things that I want. And yeah, sometimes I try to fudge the timing of it like I want it now. But in God's own time, everything will come to pass. And you got to learn how to trust him. And trust is hard if your heart's been broken. If you've trusted in someone and they have severed that trust. But I have to say, trust is what faith is all about. If you don't trust, then it's hard for you to love. If you don't trust, it is hard for you to have joy. So, so you got to learn. You got to learn how to trust. Trust that God has got you in the hollow of his hand. Trust that God is going to lead you to where you need to go. Trust that God is able to move any obstacle. And then if he doesn't move the obstacle, he can give you the strength to go over the obstacle, or around the obstacle, or give you enough power to get you through the obstacle. Don't try to control it. Trust God. Let God do it. These doors are open. Our deacons and deaconesses are here to minister, and we're here to welcome you to 12th Baptist Church. There may be somebody in their life and in their spirit find themselves in a situation where you know you need a little more than just church attendance but you need Jesus in your life the scripture says behold I stand at the door and knock and for some of you he's been knocking and he wants you to do something he wants you to open that door and 
You say, well, what do I do? Just come right down these aisles. Our deacons and our deaconesses know exactly what to do. They know how to pray. They know how to lead you to the throne of grace. And you could know Jesus for yourself. Or if you need help with your life, your spiritual life, if you've been suffering, been down and out, things have not been going right because you've been away from God, you've been away from church, it happens to the best of us. We stop going to church, we stop reading the Bible, we stop praying, we cut ourselves off from that lifeline. But the truth be told, you've never been cut off from him. Never been cut off from Jesus. The older I get, the more I hear Jesus' voice in that midnight hour talking to me. Maybe somebody here who needs to recommit themselves to Jesus, you could come down these aisles. Or if you need a church home, 12th Baptist is a fantastic home to be a part of. We have, I would say, the best pastor in the city. We do. Now, some folk may argue with me. Just don't do it in front of me, that's all. That's my pastor. And this fellowship is a wonderful fellowship. We're not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. The doors are open for you. As our musicians sing, won't you come? pastor always says it's never too late never too late you can come to us at any time any place reach us 
at the church, online, anytime. Now, if you call at two in the morning, I may not be coherent, but I'll still have a willing heart if you need the Lord. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask Minister Jeremy Tate to lead us in our giving. Good afternoon, Talk Baptist. Thank you, Reverend Brown, for that wonderful word, for that reminder. Amen. Amen. May we prepare our hearts now as we prepare to give. At the end of our prayer, our uh, team will come to the forefront. Our ushers will come to the forefront, and they'll tell you what you need to do in order to give. We'll line up. We'll have our ushers come forth after the prayer, and you can give. Um, you can also give online through Gively, through Tidely. You can give through PayPal. You can give all types of ways here, um, but just follow the instructions after we pray. May we pray at this time. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this chance. Thank you that in this resurrection that you remind us that even when we feel as though we are going astray, that you are right there, that you are present. So Lord, we give what we can give in our strength. I pray that you receive our gifts. I pray that you receive the gifts that have been given, those who had a desire to give but had it not, and those who are just giving themselves, dear Lord, till they can give of the abundance in which you give to us, dear Lord. I pray that in our giving that we can advance the gospel, bring those who are far and near, and dear Lord, that we can continue to exclaim your name throughout this land. For it is in your name that we pray. Amen.
God the praise for this wonderful ensemble. God bless you. Said, uh, said Leanne, is that Leanne? Yeah, I'm talking to you. You know, there, there, she did a TED talk recently. I just want to make sure. I, I didn't know that you were Jamaican. But now I know she's Jamaican. You want to know what I'm talking about? Watch the TED Talk. Watch the TED Talk. So I just wanted to point her out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else done a TED Talk? Y'all need to let me know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. Today is a gorgeous day. I want to say the winter is past but I live in New England. You never know. But for today, please do something to make you smile. Do something that will be enjoyable and fulfilling. And make sure you realize that God has given you all the joy, all the grace, and all the love that you need. Don't let this day end without you smiling or laughing, doing something so that you can enjoy life. Shall we pray? God, we thank you and we praise you for the beauty of every day that you give us. Bless, Lord, our pastor and family as they travel. Give them traveling mercies. Bless, Lord, everyone within the sound of my voice, either here in the congregation or online. And God, I pray that as we enjoy this day, that we always remember that you walk with us and you speak to us all the way down to our very souls. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. And let us all say together, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.